Yes, it's that time of the year. We got a ton of OLED monitors coming in hot, hard, and buff. And today we're taking a look at one from Gigabyte with their Aura CO 49DQ, which was sent to me as a loaner for this review. But of course, that's not gonna change my opinion. So let's stop wasting time and get right into the specs. Now this is a 5120 by 1441, 44 Hertz, 49 inch, 32 by nine quantum dot OLED gen three panel with an alleged response time of 0.03 milliseconds. Yes, it's G-Sync and FreeSync compatible. And in terms of VESA certifications, it does come with VESA Display HDR True Black 400 and ClearMR 8000, meaning that it should be pretty good for HDR and really clear in motion. Now, in terms of the stand, it comes with one. It's all right, although I do feel like the feet are comically large and it doesn't rotate vertically. Now, in terms of the ports, pause if you need to, but do be aware, those HDMI 2.1 ports I tested as only 24 gigabit, so you will still need to use display shim compression even over HDMI. Now, in terms of a vase amount, yes, it does support it, and the overall design I do feel like is pretty good, but it's kind of funny because the cables do stick out of the bottom no matter what you do, so maybe change that in the future, Gigabyte, but coming in at a price of around $1,300, I do feel like it's gonna be in a bit of a tough spot because there are a couple of other 49-inch OLEDs much like this coming from Samsung with their OLED G9 models that are operating at 240 hertz rather than 144 and do typically cost 100 to 200 dollars less depending on sales so this monitor is going to have to bring it in a couple of other areas if i'm going to be recommending it for more money over those monitors now in terms of the warranty yes you do get 24 months on this one and overall i do feel like it's a pretty reasonable warranty but let's get into the actual performance of this thing to see if it's worth it over the oled g9 models and first starting off with the color Honestly, my first impressions are this is amazing. All glossy quantum dot OLEDs always look great and this is no exception, but what about the actual accuracy? And in SDR, it's actually pretty good, although I was able to improve upon it with an ICC profile, which I will have linked in my Patreon in the description below, which also gets you access to the Discord. And I do highly appreciate everybody who supports me there. But in terms of the HDR, unfortunately, the same cannot be said. It is gonna be a little bit off here, no matter what mode you choose, and it's gonna be over brightening things, which will lead to a loss in detail, especially in shadows. So that is unfortunate to see, although it does mean that it is gonna be, well, very bright. Now, in terms of the actual color volume, in SDR, it's actually very good, giving us around 110% DCI P3, and in HDR, around 112. So very, very good stuff there. But now let's kind of move on to brightness and first starting off with the 100% window, this is going to be really important for just day-to-day -day usage. And here, really impressive, we're getting 280 nits, which is actually the second brightest quantum dot OLED that I've measured thus far, although you can see that mini LED does far surpass it. But now let's go ahead and move on to a 10% window. This is more important for say HDR gaming. And here, this is actually the brightest quantum dot OLED that I've measured in this area coming in at 500 nits, although it is still far short of the MLAW OLED and definitely mini LED. So I would like this to get even brighter for future generations. But now let's go ahead and talk about the 1% window. This is gonna be the peak highlight that it can actually achieve. And here we get a very impressive 1,083 nits. This is actually the second brightest OLED that I've measured thus far on this list. So really, really good stuff there. It's just a little bit short of MLAW OLED, which is really good at those peak highlights. But now let's go ahead and talk about how's it gonna feel like in an actual game? Well, I've come up with a new method of measuring that where I measure the terrain and then a peak highlight in Baldur's Gate 3. And here it's actually pretty good. On the terrain, we got 240 nits. And then on the peak highlight, it was a little bit underwhelming at 327 nits. So it will look pretty decent overall, but it is gonna fall short of say, MLAW OLED and as you can see mini LED just blows everything out of the water in terms of brightness so hopefully this gives you an idea of what you can expect it to look like in terms of brightness in an actual game and in terms of the minimum brightness it's zero so you're gonna get infinite contrast which means especially in a dark room you're gonna get excellent HDR performance and you also get per pixel local dimming that comes with OLED so really really good stuff there but what about the latency is this good for online gaming and I would say yeah 30 milliseconds of total system System latency isn't too far off from some 240 hertz and 360 hertz models so it's not gonna be the best of the best but it's certainly 
pretty good. And in terms of the actual motion performance here, also we can see that it's really good in motion thanks to it being OLED with its near instantaneous response times. And it's just absolutely destroying the mini LED on the far right at the same refresh rate, making this really good for competitive gaming. But what about the text clarity and subpixel layout? Well, unfortunately, this is using a triangle layout of RGB, so there is going to be some fringing of green or red that you will see from time to time, but the overall text clarity is, I think, all right. It's not amazing, but it is better than the first Quantum to OLEDs that we saw last year. So I wouldn't be too worried about this, but maybe after a long time of usage, it'll give you a little bit of eye strain. Now, in terms of the finish and perceived clarity, it's actually pretty good. It does come with an excellent glossy finish, but I do feel like it could be improved upon as this glossy finish does handle ambient light really poorly. Whereas if they did choose to use something like Gorilla Glass or say the LG glossy OLED that they use on their TVs, you would get better ambient light handling while still getting a very clear image. But I would much prefer this over a matte finish as the clarity is far, far better. And the only thing that really harms it is the triangle layout, making it a little bit less clear than it would be if it was a regular strip RGB. Now, in terms of the viewing angles, quantum.oled is excellent, and this is no exception. And the uniformity is also pretty good. I saw a difference of around 50 nits from the highest to the lowest brightness on the panel and the menu I think is okay, but it is missing some features to try and make it more accurate. And in terms of some issues I found with this display, well, let's just revisit. Yeah, 24 gigabit HDMI 2.1, that's not great. It is definitely oversaturated out of the box and it does have lifted blacks in HDR. So I'm gonna say as a conclusion, it does look really, really great. I think this monitor looks fantastic, but it is inaccurate and there's really no way to make it accurate in HDR. And it does offer a lower refresh rate for more money than the OLED G9 models. So I do think it needs a firmware update as well as a price drop before I can tell you to like definitely go out and rush and buy this. But if you don't care about accuracy and you want the brightest 49 inch that I've measured so far, well then I will have it linked in the description below. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin flex and durable housing, and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out RuPro on Amazon today.